I'm going to move on. Let's connect with uh, Ravi Jaikar, Chief Strategy Officer with All Cargo, and let's talk about how things are moving for the logistics sector, how things are moving as far as their entire assessment of the energy prices and high uh, fuel prices are concerned. Ravi, great to have you back, and thank you for joining us. Uh, well, the first most obvious question is that fuel prices have gone up by about 8 to 10 rupees per litre. How has that translated into uh, margin and business for you? Yeah, so from our perspective, uh, fuel is largely a pass-through cost, you know, be it uh, the shipping business, wherein it reflects in the higher ocean freight rates, or be it the domestic express business, wherein the fuel cost is largely passed through. But a higher fuel cost definitely means that the cost of logistics goes up, and that puts some bit of a pressure on the demand. Uh, and uh, from that perspective, uh, if the uh, you know, increase in fuel prices globally is sustained, it could have a little bit of a downward pressure on the global trade and a similar impact could be seen on the uh, domestic side as well. Uh, but from a margin perspective, it's largely a pass-through cost, so it doesn't really make much impact for us. Give us a sense of the total volume of the business which uh, you're currently conducting. I just want to compare this with, let's say, what you were doing a quarter ago. What we're trying to perhaps understand from you is that there is a view that high commodity prices and low rural demand is impacting logistics as a sector. Yeah, so I think, you know, uh, as far as our business is concerned, we've been outperforming, gaining market share. Therefore, our growth rates uh, per se have been much beyond the market growth rates, like last year as well. In the international business, we grew almost over 20%, which is far ahead of the uh, trade growth rate. So I think from a perspective of how the economy and trade is shaping up, it would be good to look at the macro indicators. And if you look at the world trade, you know, with uh, the rising fuel prices, the Russia-Ukraine crisis in the West and the whole China lockdowns in the East, what we've been witnessing is that everybody is estimating that trade, which was estimated to grow at about 45 to 4.8%, the expectations are now being trimmed down to 27 to 75 to about 3%. So that's the kind of impact which, you know, the entire uh, situation in China and the Russia-Ukraine situation is having on the overall trade flows. Ravi, hi there. Go, terms of the, go yeah, ahead. Please, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go. Now, I just think, you know, similarly, likewise, in the domestic side as well, uh, perhaps, you know, we've seen that the GDP and the trade growth forecasts have been trimmed down. So while it is still a growth, perhaps it could have been more if the uh, pressure on the logistics cost was not there. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, what about the express logistics business? Wanted to understand how margins are shaping up here? So in the express logistics business, like I said, uh, they're not really dependent on the fuel cost. Fuel cost is a pass-through uh, cost for us. Uh, we have been focusing on, you know, utilization, network optimization, and those measures uh, create an improvement in the uh, operating profit margins, and then the whole operating leverage by using technology and um, keeping the headcount in uh, check is what allows us to improve the bottom lines. Now, as part of the company's restructuring plan, you completed the business transfer of the project forwarding and logistics arm. Um, what is going to be the outlook going forward? Yeah, so I think, you know, we have been uh, very focused over the last three years in our transformational journey. And our stand is that we want to focus on our core businesses. When we talk about our core businesses, it is international supply chain. Uh, container freight station business, express logistics and contract logistics. All the other businesses which were, let's say, marginal or non-core businesses for us, be it uh, project cargo transportation or other businesses, uh, cold chain in Gati, we have been divesting those businesses. And the core businesses also are being restructured by way of the ongoing demerger, which we initiated in December. We have already got the shareholder approval. The stock exchange approvals have also come in over the last couple of weeks, and we are now going to file with NCLD perhaps sometime in this week. What that would lead to over the next eight to nine months, uh, perhaps, would be that the terminals business would get segregated into all cargo terminals. The real estate business would, you know, kind of segregate into Trans India uh, Realty, and all cargo logistics would be a combination of asset light digitally enabled business. And that's something which would be very uh, critical because, you know, businesses would gain independence. And just to explain one small thing there, you know, you look at the capital employed in um, A-grade warehouses. Now, that's a very brilliant business to be in. 
But when that business gets mixed with logistics business, it kind of throws the numbers and the analysis uh, a little bit off because that's a yield business where people invest on yield and appreciation, but on books, it's yield and depreciation. And which is why when the business stands on its own, it would have different financial parameters to be looked at. And as this capital employed, which is not really contributing to the EBIT from all cargo gets segregated, all cargo's financial indicators, ROC and uh, others would also see a uh, strong growth. So uh, the demerger is underway, uh, as you're aware. And like I said, we are hopeful that uh, the NCLT processes and the follow-up processes after that should get completed by around early next year. But Gati will remain irrespective of what is happening in all cargo. So you actually will have two parallel logistics uh, logistic companies. Uh, yes, so we would rather have uh, two logistics businesses, which are, you know, asset light. One is Gati at a uh, subsidiary level, which is separately listed, of course. And uh, the businesses which are being demerged and would therefore become independent listed entities would be the all cargo terminals, which is the CFS ICD business and the real estate business. All cargo would remain. Uh, the other businesses, be it, you know, the subsidiary uh, Gati contract logistics that we have in all cargo supply chain and the international supply chain business, all of that would continue to remain as part of all cargo logistics like how it is today. And when you say real estate business, what exactly is there in real estate business? Is this a business which again will have a lot of rental income? Yeah, so absolutely. So large part of real estate business is, you know, A-grade warehouses, which are, which are being constructed across the country. We have more than 5 million square feet. And these are all marquee assets, you know, leased out to clients like Amazon, Flipkart, Decathlon, etc. on real long-term, 10, 12 year, and sometimes even longer lease rentals. So that's a great business to be in, and that's the business which uh, All Cargo uh, would be demerging into Trans India Realty and Logistics Parks, and that's the business which would grow in a different direction outside of the current entity once it gets demerged. In uh, December this year, you had talked about how All Cargo and Gati could become a three thousand crore rupee business. Are you on track for that? At that time, you were, you know, saying it's going to be on the back of retail and SMEs. Yeah, so at All Cargo, we have already witnessed a significant growth in our uh, top line, driven by growth across all businesses. So uh, quarter ending December, we did almost 5,000 crores in top line for the quarter. So that's been a significant increase, which has been a sustained momentum, which we have built over the last several quarters. And we feel that uh, the momentum should continue as all businesses uh, continue to perform well for us. It's not very often that you see promoters or top management, uh, you know, be honest about mistakes. And you were when you said that Gati got distracted the last five to seven years. Uh, now that you're no longer distracted and you've said that this is going to be the focus of the business, uh, the fact is uh, in India, logistics business is still considered to be far more expensive than maybe other countries. Is that what you're going to be addressing in recent times, competing with Gatia are also a whole host of new age companies that have come up. For example, look at a delivery, which will also be going in for an IPO, or others which are now backed by the likes of Zomato, for example. No, absolutely. And, you know, just to uh, clarify, we only acquired Gati over two, about two years ago. And since then, we have been, uh, you know, driving all the transformational changes. And you're absolutely right. There are multiple things which need to happen to bring down the logistics costs in the country. One, of course, is technology, which is largely in our hands as well. And that's what we've been trying to do. When we use data science to drive network optimization, it also means that, you know, we are impacting climate that much less. We're utilizing assets more. We're bringing down the cost of logistics for the shippers. So it has all the positive uh, imperatives. The other part, which is uh, perhaps more important, is what needs to be uh, done by the government, and that is being done, but I think the pace could pick up, you know, which is where your dedicated freight corridors coming up, you know, your expressway is improving, the whole quality of infrastructure, which, which can enable high utilization of assets, be it railway rakes or be it trucks, everything which can be utilized more efficiently, which can run at a faster speed, would naturally bring down the cost of logistics. And the third component is fuel, which is perhaps more of a global uh, dynamic. So these three things put together, you know, initiatives of operational efficiency, which can be done uh, pretty much by companies uh, through use of technology, something which you've been doing. And uh, on the other things, we look forward to government uh, being uh, very positive about initiatives on infrastructure and logistics. 
Thanks for joining in and just clarifying what the impact is of the fuel costs as well as the outlook on the restructuring of the business and plans going forward. That's all cargo logistics for you. But to the markets yeah. then, take Thank a look you. at the deep gash that you're seeing. The Sensex is now down 1230 points.